What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. Welcome, bike, to another underdog fantasy best ball draft. We're going to chill for a minute. Wait for this bad boy to fill up. We just posted it in the Discord. If we need some heads, we'll post it onto Twitter. It is August, August 2nd. Draft season. Season. Is it on us? Thus, I hope you guys are enjoying your Monday. I hope your weekend was phenomenal. This is going to be a 12-team draft. This is going to be half PPR. This is a one-quarterback league. If you guys are in Superflex or two-quarterback leagues, I've done multiple mock drafts on that. Yesterday's video, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I did a 14-team Superflex mock. So for those, those of y'all with a lot of friends and shit, those are the big boys out there, 14-team, or go check that out on the channel. Yesterday, we're doing fantasy videos every single day, which is why you should subscribe and hang out with us on the daily. We're going uh, to light up some crack. Uh, we're going to have some Palo Santo. Get the fucking squiggly line, squiggly line vibes going right now. I could use it. I had a long ass day yesterday. We went out at like 1.15 p.m. We we're going to go to the beach and then it was kind of shitty weather. So we we hit that natural Charles Darwin pivot. <clears throat> Return things to order and hit brunch. Uh, they had pitchers of margaritas at brunch, which led to pitchers of margaritas at a different place for lunch which led to pitchers of margaritas for dinner. Thus, I'm feeling and looking like a big old piece of shit. But I'm going to make sure I hit you with the most relevant fantasy news today. So, again, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you download the Underdog app. Let me post this on Twitter so we can get this get this tang filled. Just bear with me for about five seconds. We're going to pop this off. I don't know where I'm drafting from yet. As soon as the draft fills, which we're waiting on three people, um... Then it'll automatically slot us in a spot. Boom. Post it on Twitter. That should fill up in about 10 to 15 seconds. How are we? How are we? How is we? What What are we doing? All right. If y'all are new to underdog, by the way, if y'all are new to underdog, this is the single best place to prep. And there we go. We're filled. Single best place to prep and uh, prepare for your fantasy football drafts. Okay. I got to throw my socials out here. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter. My name is uh, at Nick Ercolano. Same thing as my actual channel. Where are we pivoting from? We are from the uh, the 112 or the 111. Okay, so we're the 111 and 12 teamer. Let me get this shit out of here. Cool. Um, draft will start in 40 seconds. For those of y'all that are new to underdog, this is the, the, the sickest, the fucking sickest uh, up-and-coming platform when it comes to drafting for fantasy football. These are best ball drafts, meaning you actually don't do any in-season management which is what makes it wonderful because i'm already in probably like a lot of you guys if you're watching fantasy football youtube channels i'm assuming you're in like 38 different leagues i don't got time to do fucking waiver wires every tuesday night I'm trying to hit taco tuesday can't do that if all these if all the leagues i enter in are redraft so these buy these are buy-in leagues okay you play with random people you can play with big dogs obviously i'll send the uh the links out on twitter so if you're following me you can come draft with me and be in my youtube videos um so this is the best way to prep because because all of the leagues are three dollars, five dollar, ten dollar buy, and you choose whatever you want to buy into. As you can see, I'm broke as fuck. I got six dollars in my account. Underdog, underdog, hook brother up. Um, you get really, really sharp drafts, obviously, and that prepares you for your draft. So you can download the Underdog Fantasy app in the description down below. It'll be the first link down there. It'll take you to the Google Store, the iOS Store, whatever it is. Use promo code BDGE when you throw $10 into your account, and they're going to give you a free $25 fucking dollars on top of it. $25. So you're having $35 into your account. You can do 11, 30, 11 $3 drafts, and then and then also buy a lighter to light up your Palo Santo. So the vibes are everywhere. Okay, we have C-Mac, we have Dalvin Cook, we have Alvin Kamara, we have Derrick Henry, and we have Ezekiel Elliott, and things start to get spicy at the one six, so I'm 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 starting to get like concerned as to why people don't like Derrick Henry anymore. Like I feel like people are are getting crazy and they're like Derrick Henry's a fucking risky first round pick. Like all right, I'll, I'll give me the eighteen hundred yards into my lineup and call it a motherfucking day. Okay, Alvin Kamara seems a little bit more risky to me because we don't know who the quarterback is. If it's Taysom Hill, he's going to take goal line carries away. Probably not going to throw to Alvin Kamara as much. I mean, I showed you guys the splits in last week's video. I did a video of the uh, riskiest first-round running backs. 
And Kamara seems to be a little bit riskier than I think people are giving it credit for. But we are still seeing running backs hot and heavy, even with Saquon Barkley dropping into the second round. Oh, boy, he is he is he is floating down there. He's like a little fucking butterfly. All right. Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, wow, we are really, really far off of Saquon, huh? So we're sitting here at the 111. Let's see what running backs are left there. I mean, listen, dude, I'm I'm uh you guys really might hate this pick, and I would understand why. We don't find injuries typically, uh, but give me all the Saquon with in, in, in a best ball league, okay? Give me all the Saquon at 111 in a best ball league. I think the video I did last week, uh, this format, I do one of these drafts every single Monday, by the way, which is another reason y'all should subscribe. I think I took Saquon at the 106, and then we started hearing more news, more reports, more rumors, and I am uh, of the thought process, again, that you under-promise, over-deliver. I think... I think he'll be out there. Um, I think he'll be out there come week one. And I think he'll be okay. He might be a little bit slighted in the beginning, but listen, he's going to have a good year when all is said and done. Devontae Adams off the board, Antonio Gibson, two good picks right there. Two good picks. I respect that. Now I'm sitting here at the 2-2. Now I have like no Tyree Kill shares. I would really like to take some Najee Harris here, actually. I'm getting higher and higher on Najee Harris the more I think about him. I think about him a lot. He was in my dream last night. I think about him when I'm drinking margaritas. I can't stop thinking about Najee Harris. That being said, though, I feel like I need myself some Tyree Kill. And the fun part about grabbing a guy like Tyree Kill here is that there's a pretty good chance that Mahomes can fall to you. See, they have the ADPs right here. And Mahomes is 36, which is the last pick of the third round, I believe. And that's exactly where I am. I'm at the 311, which is pick. 35. So there's a really good chance that I get to stack Tyree Kill and Patrick Mahomes here. Unless Jay Harms or, or Austin are going to be... Uh, oh, fuck me. Fuck me. See, this 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 was bad game theory. This was bad strategy and team management by me because Austin gets to choose... Oh, you guys can't see it because my big-ass head is in the way. Austin, who is the pick before me at 310... We could see his team by simply clicking on it has Travis Kelsey. So if Mahomes falls to the 310, he's not getting past Austin. <clears throat> and then I just fucked up that stack. So don't do what I do. Don't be stupid, kids. Shucks. Okay, so we're starting to see that run of wide receivers in the beginning of the second round because we've pushed every running back's ADP up so fucking far that you can't squeeze any value out of it. By the time you get to the 2-2, you're debating between the high, 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 high end wide receivers and then running backs that you don't really believe in, Someone that, some that are risky. But I am getting higher and higher on Najee Harris. And the reason being, I mean, I, I, one, every report out of camp has just been so positive about this kid, uh, talking about how involved he's going to be in the passing game, just talking about how he's just a, a bright young man. And um, those are the type of players I like to draft on my fantasy team. Guys with character, guys with enthusiasm. And guys are going to get 375 touches as a rookie, okay? The rookie hype seems to get blown out of proportion every year. But there are a select few guys that we know are drafted as workhorses that go into teams and situations in which there are no other options besides using them as workhorses, right? It, it's very, very clear which rookies are going to be overhyped in redraft, right? You look at... Uh, the last bunch of years, and you look at the Travis Etienne's of this year, you look at Javante Williams, clearly going into a running back by committee. You look at Najee Harris, clearly not, right? You look at guys that were like Zeke. You look at guys like Josh Jacobs going into situations where there were no no one else to compete for touches. The draft capital that these guys got might have been near other rookie draft capital running backs, but the situations are vastly different. We can tell who's going to get the touches and who's not going to get the touches. Najee Harris is a guy who's got a very safe floor because of the touches. Is he going to be inefficient? Probably because the O-line stinks. But but we've also seen Mike Tomlin use a guy like Le'Veon Bell, right? Like this is a guy who for years everyone argued that all he wanted to do was give his top running back touches and touches and touches and touches and touches like a fucking pedophile out here. And Najee Harris is a child this year. Terrible example, but what do you want from me? It's early. I haven't finished my cup of coffee yet. Ain't finished my cup of joe. Here comes Austin. Just put the dagger straight into my heart and finish me. Wow, where's CD? So CD Lamb at the 3-2. 
We are. We are just there is just no the ADP on underdog is just so goddamn sharp. I'm starting to be I'm starting to think it's too sharp. I'm starting to think that it's like a knife in your kitchen that you pick up and the handle has a blade on it as well. That's like what the underdog ADP is at this point. Okay. Wow, 3-9 for Kyler Murray before Patrick Mahomes. You love to see it. Austin, do something crazy right here. Do something crazy. Think I won't take Patrick Mahomes. Think I won't do it. Come on, baby. One time. One time. Time out. Time out. Do a timeout. Come on, baby. Seven. Six. Count down with me, everybody out there. Five. Let's fucking go. Huge mistake, Austin. What, you, what are you doing there, buddy? Yes, sir. Oh, I probably could have waited on that and taken him. On the next pick, for some reason, I thought Austin would. Man, I'm I'm really off my game today, this morning. But there's really no one else I want to take right now. Everybody else stinks. Everybody else absolutely stinks. But we got the stack with Mahomes and Tyree Kill, one of the most uh, one of the most scrumptious stacks out there from last year. Obviously, hindsight, but they're probably going to run it back and have some monster games this year. Now we are sitting there at the four two. And I don't really have any Allen Robinson shares, and there are no running backs I'm really paying up for uh, at the moment. I have zero Miles Sanders shares, which probably needs to change, but I still don't want to take him this early. I don't think he's an early fourth round pick. Maybe, maybe in one quarterback leagues, it's not terrible. I just think that that's. I mean, they're already telling us they're going to use a committee there, so I'm not really allowed to be upset about it when they do. If I do draft him, let me take Allen Robinson on the notion that maybe he's got some upside if Justin Fields gets on the team. But again, this is, I mean, okay, the start of the draft, we got Mahomes, Saquon, Tyreek Hill, Allen Robinson. Kind of a boring team and a little bit risky with Saquon, but down at the 111, I'm I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. We know what Allen Robinson is going to give us. He's going to be a boring bottom wide receiver one, which is fine. He'll find his way into the lineup more weeks than he won't. Uh, tight end, there's really nothing to be had there. I will, I will smash TJ Hawkinson every day of the week. If he drops into the seventh round, Cooper Cup. There we go. He's finally starting to go ahead of Robert Woods. Wow, Robert Woods' ADP is thirty-five. He's usually going at the beginning, the end of the third round. I feel like that that can't be right. That can't be right. But again, y'all, yeah, this is the sharpest ADP out there. So if you really want to be prepared and practice for your season-long drafts, like this is the spot to be at. Underdog Fantasy. First link in description. Also, also. I didn't even mention this, but we've got the draft weekend coming up where 11 subscribers fly out to New York City, and we have a high-stakes fantasy football draft together, and we hang out for the weekend. We get an Airbnb, whatever, whatever. If you've ever wanted to meet the people on the BDGE team, everyone's going to be there. Obviously, it's going to be filmed. It's going to be turned into a motherfucking featured film, a movie, a vlog. Uh, if you use a promo code BDGE, the giveaway is going to end uh, a week from today. If you use the promo code BDGE, not only are you getting the $25 on top of the $10 you deposit, but Underdog is picking someone for the last spot in the weekend. We're literally giving away a $2,000 spot, retail value, real ass price there, to someone absolutely free just for using the promo code BDGE. If you've already deposited on Underdog this year and used the promo code, don't worry. The giveaway is backdated. We are bike dated on the giveaway and uh, you'll be entered as well. So that's going to be a, a nice little player pool of people that have used my promo code to get onto the platform. But you have one week left to also continue to use the promo code and enter the draft weekend giveaway. We fly you out to New York City, bro. Fly you out to New York City. Get to hang out. We're going out. We're go It's fucking my birthday weekend. It's going to be a good ass time. Um, so <clears throat> Go download the app, use promo code BDGE, and then start drafting with these with these frauds. So you have Cooper Cup at 4-4. We have Robert Woods at 4-5. You know, I've been very vocal about taking Cup over Woods. I think statistically they'll be uh, around the same range when the year is all said and done, but Cup gives us more touchdown upside. Julio Jones, I haven't got a lot of shares of him recently. I'm s I mean, I'm fine with him in the middle of the fourth round. I think Julio Jones is still the Julio Jones that we have known for a long time. Maybe a tiny bit of a decline, but between him and A.J. Brown, they should have an unbelievably high target share. They should take like everything. Chris Godwin, it's really hard for me to pull the trigger on Tampa Bay quarterbacks or Tampa Bay wide receivers when you can get Antonio Brown in the 8th, ninth, 10th round. Jamar Chase, I'm getting a little bit higher on. For a long time, I kind of wanted Higgins over Chase for redraft. Obviously, Chase over Higgins for dynasty. But I think I'm coming around to the fact that I would probably take Jamar Chase. Listen, we, uh, we, we, we divert our expectations of players based on news that comes out and everything out of Joe Burrow's camp has been a positive. He was a player that I was kind of fading to begin the summer. 
And now they're saying he's basically 100% cleared and the knee is not really an issue. So that was, while it was surprising to me, it's not something I can simply ignore, right? Like we hear all of the bad reports out of Saquon Barkley's camp and how he might not be ready or whatever. It's the opposite for Joe Burrow. Everything's looking crispy. Everything's looking smooth. Uh, I also need to get a little bit higher on Brandon Ayuk, I think. I think I need to start getting more shares of him. And it's really unfortunate because he was going in like the 6'5 to 6'10 range for a long time. And now you can see he's all the way up at the 5'3". Um, you know, one of my favorite resources out there for fantasy is Matt Harmon's reception perception. And it is behind a paywall. Uh, so I can't really just show you guys that. But I would suggest you go cop if you have ever wanted to see like how good of a pure route runner and separation guy any of these wide receivers are. And Brandon Ayuk was outstanding as a rookie. Debo Samuel was more in that... Um, like Juju mold, Cooper Cup mold, where he's not separating against man and press coverage, but he's really good against zone, which means that talent doesn't necessarily translate into other offenses or, or amongst different quarterbacks. It's more about the scheme and the zone uh, than anything else, where Brandon Ayuk, unbelievable against press, unbelievable against man. He's going to get open no matter what, which leads to more and more targets. I know this is a San Francisco team that's probably going to run the ball a shit ton, and they might have a running quarterback, but I think Brandon Ayuk might be good enough just to absolutely ball the fuck out for no reason. I don't know why I said no reason, because he's fucking good. 5-11. Okay, we're sitting here. Man, Miles Gaskin keeps dropping more and more. I don't hate Miles Gaskin. I do not like the wide receivers here very much. Kyle Pitts at the 5'11". I'll take a stab at, at, at Kyle Pitts down here at the 5'11". I feel like he typically goes... Uh, ADP of 40s. Yeah, so I got him 12 spots below his ADP, which is pretty nice. I actually got every one of my players below their ADP. So we're going big value. Oh, shit, I'm on the clock again. Mark Andrews. See, that's what I like. Like, I got Miles. I got Kyle Pitts one pick before Mark Andrews. Mason, good pick with Miles Gaskin. I was thinking about doing that. Um, We probably need to get another running back. I know y'all are in love with the rookie running backs, but we are into the sixth round. You don't see a ton of uh, sixth-round Travis Etienne. I still don't love it. I'll probably take Kareem Hunt. I think he's just a very safe play in this Browns offense that's you know, going to run the ball at the highest rate in the NFL. They have arguably the best offensive line in the NFL for running the ball. So Kareem Hunt, not necessarily a, a sexy pick with a lot of upside, but Saquon, you know, I like to get a little bit safety back there. So right now we got Mahomes, we got Saquon, we got Kareem Hunt, we got Tyree Kill, Allen Robinson, and um, Kyle Pitts. I'm just not sure the the rest of these guys like deserve to be in the same tier with Kareem Hunt. Like I tweeted this out, Javante Williams. Like people people lost their fucking minds when when the one guy out of Denver was like Javante Williams is getting all the first team carries at OTAs. It's like yeah, because Melvin Gordon didn't fucking show up to OTAs yet. Like he's a veteran. He shows up when he wants to show up. He gets up in the morning, he takes a shit, he works out, and he's like, eh, I'm probably not gonna go to fucking OTAs today. Okay. I'll show up when I goddamn want to. I've been in the league for like nine years. And then Melvin Gordon shows up, and then Benjamin Albright, who is probably the most on-point beat reporter from Denver, says, uh, you know, what's getting lost in all the position battles and all the players coming back from injury on Denver is the fact that Melvin Gordon is the clear RB1. Now, listen, don't, don't hear what I'm not saying. I don't think Melvin Gordon is going to be like a great fantasy asset, and I don't think that Melvin Gordon is going to be like an 18-touch guy for 17 games this year. That's not what I'm saying. He is enough of a, a, a of a fucking wrench thrown into the mix to just be annoying to Javonta Williams for his entire rookie year. Will we get starter Javonta Williams in weeks 10, 11, 12? Maybe, but that does not warrant a pick in the fifth round, which is where he started to go. So now he's falling back down to like the 6-9, which is cool. Nice, okay? It's a nice pick there. That's fine. But stop overdrafting these rookies. Speaking of Trey Sermon, I like Trey Sermon. Um, I think the sixth round is probably a little bit early from him, considering there's still a lot of running backs in that in that backfield. Um, but I'm 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 a big fan of Sermon, so I'll, I'll take shots on him in in the in the seventh round, eighth round, if he falls to me in redraft leagues or whatever. But I think sixth round is a little bit rich. I think we continue to just push people up. Cortland Sutton is actually a guy I kind of want to talk about here. Cortland Sutton. So you guys know, like injuries are one of my things that I'm very very privy to I think injury optimism is the single worst thing for fantasy players in the world all y'all get really optimistic about injuries and 
90% of the time, it does not work in the favor of whoever is injured, especially when we have negative reports. The only report I've seen about Cortland Sutton recently is that he is not, he is not, let me pull it up on Twitter real quick. Twitter. That he is not fully back from that ACL tear and he is kind of, uh, And he is kind of hesitant on it. Colin Sutton after Fangio's holding back a little bit. Uh, coming back from an ACL tear is just as much mental as it is physical. Keep that in mind. Yeah, so this is something that I learned from Dr. Jesse Morse, obviously, right here. Because he used to come on to my channel often. Where is... Uh, am I up yet? No, okay. He used to come onto my channel often. And he would always talk about... He's like the first person I learned about, you know, the whole ACL, ACL return kind of thing. And how we like to draft players two years removed from the ACL, not one year removed, because, you know, while the time frame might be nine to 12 months, you know, optimistically, there's still a mental barrier. And the fact that, you know, he is still in that mental barrier, a lot of a lot of players can kind of fucking zoom right past that mental barrier. But if that's going to be a problem for um, if that's going to be a problem for him mentally, like. We are still, sorry, let me just fucking make my pick here. Where are we at? Uh, we're at the 7-Eleven. Do we like any of the running backs here? Mostert, no. Carter, no. James Robinson, no. Ooh, it's ugly. It's ugly. I don't really like Visca, but I could stack Visca and grab Trevor Lawrence as my RB2. You know what? I'm going to take some Curtis Samuel. I have very, very little Curtis Samuel. Uh, sick. I missed my pick. All right. Well, they took Visca. That's fine. I'll take Visca over DJ Chark. I will definitely take Visca over DJ Chark. I was doing a write-up on the, the Jags wide receiver group. Maybe I can grab Marvin Jones in like the tenth round too, and do a, a double double flip at bike stike. Should we just grab all of the Jacksonville Jaguars? No, nah, I can't do that. I can't do that. Mm. I love that Jalen Hurts keeps dropping. I don't know, dude. I you know what else? I keep hearing more and more reports about um, Deshaun Watson to Philadelphia. Like, those reports keep chirping away. I keep hearing the little birdie singing in the back of my ear. The more and more I listen, the the louder they get. And I'm starting to get a little bit nervous that Deshaun Watson may very well end up in Philly. They have a lot of firepower there. Uh, I'll grab Curtis Samuel now. And for those of you guys that don't understand the starting lineups here, so basically, again, this is best ball. So the software automatically starts the best player at each position. Like I said, you don't do any in-season management, so you don't do any sit starts. You don't do any waiver wire stuff. You don't do any trades. So you draft a big team. This is going to be an 18-round draft. All right, so you've got a hell of players onto your roster. But with that being said, it automatically starts the top performers at each position each week. So you start one quarterback. You start two running backs. You start three wide receivers and one tight end and a flex. Okay, so typically we're drafting a lot of wide receivers. So you'll probably see me end up with like seven or eight wide receivers. You'll see me end up with five running backs, probably two quarterbacks, two tight ends, something like that. If I'm really weak at a position, I might go with a few more players at those positions. But I try to diversify as well. One of the cool things about Underdog is they actually uh, they give you your exposure, right? So you so let's 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 do an example for you right now. You, you download the Underdog app, which is the first link in the description. You use the promo code BDGE when you deposit 10 bucks. You have 35 into your account. You rip off 11 drafts over the next week. In those 11 drafts, you drafted a whole bunch of different players, right? We like to diversify the revenue. On Underdog, there's a slot in their app on their website where you can look at exposure. So it tells you the percentage of exposure you have amongst all the players. So say you drafted Kareem Hunt once in those 11 drafts. According to my math, according to my calculation, it'll say you own, a, you have a 9% exposure to Kareem Hunt, right? One out of 11 is about 9%. If my math is not terrible, which is pretty good usually. Correct. So uh, that's the other cool thing. So if you're starting to draft someone like really, really, really often, okay? Uh, so for instance, I might have a 35% exposure to Saquon Barkley. And I would say, okay, I probably need to pull back. So next time I'm on the clock and I'm sitting there at the 111, instead of taking Saquon Barkley, I would take. Devontae Adams, or I would take Najee Harris, you know, et cetera, et cetera, just giving examples and shit. So um, that's one of the cool things I really like about Underdog is, is the exposure tool that makes it easy to see where you need to start pivoting because this is a website where you, you end up doing high volume drafts. You do a lot of drafts and it get you know, you get to learn the trends and everything that's going on in these drafts, um, which is what makes you prepared for your actual drafts. 
And uh, I took Curtis Samuel. Uh, he's another guy in reception perception who is just like a very, very good separator. And that tends to lead to breakout seasons. You know, it, that's a translatable asset or attribute from a wide receiver. Um, so he's not a guy I have a lot of shares of just because Terry McLaurin is very clearly the alpha. Ryan Fitzpatrick could bottom out. So it's a risky pick, I think. But I think the talent is there to warrant a pick kind of uh, mid-round wide receiver pick here. He'll have his blow-up games. Back to Cortland Sutton, though. Yeah, here's the thing. Like, 9 to 12 months is the recovery timetable. However, a lot of players are not back mentally. They don't trust that knee. They don't, you know, if something else is tweaked or whatever, they start to question themselves. They start to question the the strength that they have in those legs. And the fact that, again, anytime you, see, you hear negative injury reports at this point in the summer, it has to raise a red flag. It, that gets me nervous for Cortland Sutton. So, in my opinion, Cortland Sutton should be dropping down your rankings a little bit due to this news. Until we hear from people that he's running 100%, until we hear that he's not holding back anymore, which is not going to happen overnight. So, the fact that it's happening on August 1st, we're hearing it now, it, you know, by next week, you're not going to say, okay, he just went from like 80% to 100% in five days. Like, that's not how it happens. So, I'm a little bit nervous about Cortland Sutton starting the year off a little bit slow, which means Jerry Judy stonks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know I mean? What else do we got? All right. Well, hopefully we can grab Trevor Lawrence at one of these picks so we can get our our, uh, our viscous stack. Actually, we can pr pretty much wait on that. We can grab one of these quarterbacks. I have no Trey Lance. And Trey Lance is a fun pick in these drafts because, again, you don't pick your starters. They automatically start the best players for you. So you uh, you um, you don't have to worry about like taking a guy like Trey Lance and sitting him or starting him or whatever because the weeks that he does end up playing is when you pounce on him. I might I might do a little uh I know this is way ahead of ADP, but all these players are kinda in the same tier for me. I might see if I can grab if I can get Trevor Lawrence here, I should be able to grab Marvin Jones on the next pick as well. So we'll do our little Jacksonville stack. We'll have Trevor Lawrence, we'll have LaVisco, we'll have Marvin Jones. What I should do is probably take a running back here. Oh, Melvin Gordon's still sitting there? Yeah, I'm talking shit over here. Melvin Gordon is sitting here down at the fucking 9, 11, 10 spot. Fuck. 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 I do need another running back. Do I like him more than Zach Moss? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Ah, fuck me. Guys, I'm in a pickle here. I'm in a pickle. Yeah, you know what? We're going to fade the running backs. I could always, could always do a little, like, Fitzpatrick, Curtis Samuel stack or some shit like that. So we're going to we're gonna double up on... Uh, Hopefully, Mason does not take Melvin Gordon. Let's see what he does here. It's so crazy that Jamonta Williams is going in the early sixth round and Melvin Gordon is fucking ADP of 118. That just makes so little sense to me. Fuck. Stupid motherfucker, Mason. You stupid fucking little cunt. <sighs> okay. Okay. Whatever. Didn't even want him anyways. This is me propping him up so you idiots fucking take him. Who do we like here? I like Troutman as the another tight end, but I kind of want to secure at least another running back that gets work, and we're going to do that with Gus Edwards there. So he's my running back four. Now we have a bunch of fat running backs at the end of my roster. A bunch of fat fucking running backs. I can't break off a run more than nine yards. All right, Mason. We're going to call this... We're going to... This is going to be known as Mason Monday, who ruined my whole fucking Monday. Whatever. I'm over it. Uh, Uncle Lenny at the 10 four. Did Rojo go off the board already? Let's see. James Robinson, Michael Carter. So, okay, so Ronald Jones is starting to go three rounds earlier than Leonard Fournette. That's interesting. Uh, did we have news on Ronald Jones? I feel like something came out last week. Sorry, give me like 11 seconds.
I don't know. I feel like something came out last week about Ronald Jones, but whatever fucking came out should not be making this a four round gap between Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette. All right, I'm exaggerating. It's probably like three, maybe even two and a half, but what was it? It was uh seven eight to Leonard Fournette was a ten four. That's almost a three round gap. Like, yeah, I'm not that's kind of ridiculous. Fournette, David Johnson, good picks there. Elijah Moore, I'm I'm uh, I'm getting higher and higher on. I feel like he's gonna have a for sure rookie breakout year. Henry Ruggs, Randall Cobb, ah, Michael Pittman, I can't get on board. That's like where he was going pre Wentz news. How are you gonna still take him there? Uh, you Mike Murphy grab my, my Marvin Jones share. I doubt Trevor Lawrence falls back to me here. I like Rashad Bateman too. He's he's someone that uh, oh Mike Murphy just fucked my day up. He just did what I was gonna do one round earlier. Good for you. That's a nice. That's a nice move right there. I respect you, barely, but I do. I like his team a lot. I like his team a lot. Michael, Michael, finally learning. You're in like every draft I do. I feel like Jalen Hurts, Trevor Lawrence at quarterback, C Mac, Dobbins, Edmonds at running back, and then the what? What the fuck? And the wide receivers: Lockett, Deontay, Cortland Sutton, Brandon Cooks, Marvin Jones, Darren Waller. Yeah, that's a that's a nice squad. That is a nice squad, sir. Well done. So much better than me. It's unbelievable how much better you guys are than me at this. Okay. Where are we? We are in the 11th round. There you go. You see Trey Lance go off the board. You're starting to see those rookie quarterbacks start to uh, move the chains a little bit. Let me show you guys the draft board. I know some of you guys like to complain about that shit. I'm gonna move my annoying ass up here. This is a draft board so far. I'm gonna I'm gonna let it marinate for a little bit while you guys can kind of sit here and actually, you know, I could pop it out into a, a new window, I believe. That's Melvin Gordon in the bottom right. We're gonna cover that up. It's gonna ruin the fucking rest of my day. So what do you what do you guys see that that jumps off the board to you here? Anything besides fucking ninety two running backs in the first round? Devontae Adams at the one twelve is pretty beautiful. Calvin Ridley at the two six, I feel like is fire as well. A couple of guys, and I think I'm gonna make a a new video of guys that I've been fading but should not be fading right now. They're like guys that I'm not not necessarily fading. But, like, I just can't seem to pull the trigger on them when it's my turn to be on the clock. I think Terry McLaurin is one of them. I just need to be higher on him. Um, who else? I think Darrell Henderson at the 5'7 is a good, a good – like, I think that's around where he should get picked, and I'd be fine with it there. Like, he does not have the upside of Cam Akers, right? Actually, you know what I could do? I could just draft from my phone, and you guys could still see the clock. I'm going to draft from the phone, and you guys could see, I mean, the board. Oh, yeah, I am on the clock. We're on the clock. I actually just might fade quarterback into fucking oblivion and take the Saints quarterbacks, even though I love, where did, did Robert Tunyon? Yeah, Robert Tunyon definitely went off the board early. You guys should be drafting Robert Tunyon in every fucking draft, by the way. Just throwing that out there. Wide receivers are ugly. Yeah, let's grab Troutman here. Call it a motherfucking day. And I'm probably going to grab Taysom Hill slash... Uh, I'm probably going to grab three quarterbacks altogether. One of them being Taysom Hill later in the draft. Tua, I don't love that pick. Oh, you guys can't even see it, huh? I don't love... I'll just fucking fuck. What's top right is Devontae Adams, all right? Whatever, fuck you guys. Let me minimize myself into oblivion. Uh, I can't really get on. It's it's tough to get on board with Tua right now with the whole fucking weapons group banged up. You know, Jalen Waddle's foot is like not not doing well. We have uh, someone else is hurt too. I can't remember Devonta Parker maybe. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Man, I, I keep taking I have a lot of JD McKissick as my running back five. I just know he's gonna he's gonna get you points and he's gonna have big games. 
And uh, and Emmanuel Sanders is a guy that I'd be taking a lot, a lot of as well. I keep finding myself taking him earlier and earlier, unfortunately, in these drafts. Like he was my 15th round pick in almost every draft. But like once you get to this spot in the in the draft where all of the tiers just kind of blend into one another, you just kind of got to get your guys. Um, what was I saying? Oh, Darrell Henderson. Like here, here's the thing, Darrell Henderson. Not as talented as Cam Akers, but he's clearly going to be the running back one. And he's a guy where I think he's going to finish the year probably as an RB2, but he's going to give you multiple like high-end RB1 weeks, okay? He's explosive. He'll give you big runs. He'll get some of the goal line work, right? Like Cam Akers and Malcolm Brown are both gone, which leaves a shitload of goal line work uh, to be had, right? Malcolm Brown literally like led the team in goal line work, receptions, uh, targets, like everything. That's all up for grabs for a guy like Terrell Henderson. So I don't think he should be drafted as like an RB1. I think he should be drafted as an RB2, but I think you should be pretty happy getting him as your RB2 in regular leagues, right? There are a lot of guys in that zone, like Darrell Henderson at the 5'7", Mike Davis, Miles Gaskin, like they're all like kind of risky, right? They're all like RB2s, but I, I feel really, really strongly, really safely about Darrell Henderson finishing as an RB2 and giving you a bunch of RB1 weeks. I don't feel that way with Travis Etienne. I don't feel that way with Jamonte Williams. I don't know if I feel that way with the other guys that are being picked around that spot. So Darrell Henderson, last week's video, I got him at like the 7-12, which was nuts. And I remember I was like, did he tear his fucking ACL while I've been doing this draft or something? Um, so that was crazy. If you can grab him in the 6th, 7th, 8th round, like unbelievable value, obviously. But I don't hate him in the 5th round either. I think you're getting like a really, really solid RB2 running back late in drafts. Like, I don't know what the difference between Darrell Henderson and Miles Sanders' stats are going to be this year. But they're a full round off. Like, I don't I don't see them having that, that big of a difference in uh, statistics. Oof. I have to pee so bad. I drank like five water bottles when I woke up this morning, which is, I don't know why I'm putting another one in my face. I'm going to run to the bathroom, all right? You guys keep yourselves occupied. Don't miss me too much. And while you're waiting for my next pick to come up, what you should do is scroll down and click the link to take you to the app store to download the Underdog app, okay? Download it right now while I'm peeing. And use promo code BDGE when you deposit It'll get you $25 and a spot into the draft weekend giveaway raffle, which will be decided in a couple days. And that weekend is August 27th to the 29th, by the way.
Oh, shit. We on the air? Oh, boy. Who did I take with my last pick? Cole fucking Beasley. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, now we have the Buffalo stack that no one asked for or wanted. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, fuck. So I know you guys give me a lot of shit for being unprofessional. And I really don't give a fuck about those comments. If you're looking for professionalism, go to your fucking nine to five. All right. However, I literally just took a bathroom break in the middle of a video. Like makes one vi YouTube video, leaves for 10 minutes of it. And then I let them auto pick Cole Beasley and T.Y. Hilton. They need to make a feature that's like uh, you can... Uh, fuck, I know you guys are going to be like, yeah, they have the fucking Q feature. That's a good point. I meant uh, the opposite, the anti-Q feature. Like, get make sure this guy is never fucking drafted on my team. There's no one I wanted less than COVID Cole and TY who can't separate. <sighs> TY is basically like fucking glue to defenders at this point. And now he has Jacob Eason throwing in the ball. This is a problem. Oh, boy. Okay, we're going to regroup. We're going to regather ourselves and hit the drawing board again. So we have two tight ends. Yeah, we're going to wait on... Uh, we're going to continue to wait on quarterback because we don't need anybody right now. I'm really going to go with Taysom probably. Maybe we'll grab like two, two shit quarterbacks, Taysom and somebody else. Because I think if you're going to go with Taysom or Jameis, they are very risky, but you can get them in basically the last round. Um, you should probably grab a third quarterback. But luckily, we have Patrick Mahomes, who should be our starter almost every week. Then we need to get a fifth running back, which I probably should have done earlier. It's kind of ugly here. Uh, down here, I you have no one that you can actually guarantee will get. Half these guys might not even make the team. Like, I don't know if Gio's going to make the team. Honestly, like, nah, probably won't happen. I wouldn't be completely shocked if James White didn't make the team. He got a really shitty contract. And at this point, I think he's holding their offense back. Like I think they'll keep him because he's a veteran presence and he's someone that these other running backs can learn from. But there's a lot of there's a lot of chirp out of camp about Ramondre Stevenson being a really good pass catcher. Maybe he plays a bigger role. Uh, I just feel like James White is like one of those. He's, it's almost like you know how people say when Odell Beckham's in the lineup, it actually fucks Baker Mayfield a little bit because he zones in on him when he shouldn't be, and they're forcing the offense a little bit. I feel like that's what James White is at this point. He just like catches the ball and dies and falls, and it's just like the worst fucking offense you could possibly run. Wouldn't be surprised if James White gets cut. Wouldn't be surprised if Gio gets cut. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, Damian Williams gets cut. A lot of these guys just might get cut. So finding guys that you know are guaranteed touch guys is very difficult at this point in drafts. So some of the guys that I find myself taking shares of down here uh, are Malcolm Brown. I think they really like him, and I wouldn't be surprised if he gets goal line work. I don't know why. This is a gut feeling, so don't like take this as logic or making any sense. But I've been taking some Marlon Mack as well. I have. It's just I, I keep having this vision that Marlon Mack is like going to be okay this year. Oh, Quadri Allison makes a lot of sense too because he continues to run as the two there. We're seeing a lot of stuff out of camp that he's getting all the starter touches. With I guess Mike Davis is not there for whatever reason. I didn't really read any reports of, as to why, but um. But yeah, Quadri Allison is, I think, a high upside guy who's really, for those of y'all that don't know him, I remember him coming out of Pitt. I was kind of excited as a Falcons fan. He's he's a thick back. He's like 230, but he runs a really, really fast 40. So he has a really good weight adjusted speed score. Um, and I remember break, watching him break off like an 85-yard run in college. And I was like, who is this Eddie Lacy chasing a fucking cheeseburger ass dude, busting off these big ass runs? So I was excited about Quadri, and now he's he's slowly creeping up the depth chart, and I think he could be an interesting uh, an interesting plug down here. He's not someone that I would guarantee touches, but I do think he will be in a committee there. So uh, he's someone that I should that you guys should keep an eye on. So wide receiver, do we want to get another one? We'll probably I think we're going to double tap running back here because our running back core is a little bit weak. Now, typically, if I'm in a tournament play, I'm definitely capping out at probably five running backs, but uh, I'd be okay taking six here. Mason taking my guys. I've been taking a whole lot of MVS with the news that Aaron Rodgers is back, obviously. Uh, Marlon Mack, Quadri. Marlon Mack, Quadri. We're actually going to go with Quadri, fuck it, because I have a lot of Marlon Mack already. 
So we'll take Quadri here. And then my last two picks, which I'll have pick 17, 18, those are the last two rounds in the draft. We'll see what uh, what falls to us here. Maybe we'll go with two quarterbacks in a row. Maybe we will go with uh, – someone's going to take Taysom before I do. I just realized that because I'm – actually, no, I'm pretty early in the 18th round. I'm one of the last – the first picks because I am at the end of the 17th round. Who are some other guys we like down here? Wide receiver-wise, eh. I'm kind of fine gambling on Alan Lazard. Dwayne Eskridge, I'm also okay with. Olamid. Cool. Uh, Keelan Cole, I think, is like a surprise guy that might get some decent target numbers this year. I don't think people really like understand. One, Keelan Cole's like a good player. He's a good separator. Um, good, like prospect profile as well dominator breakout age was good and he's, he's been like a solid role player in a lot of nfl offenses last year he commanded close to 90 targets uh and this jets wide receiver group is pretty open because denzel mims is stinking apparently i wouldn't be surprised if keelan cole's a starter there so he is someone that i will add to my queue josh palmer i kind of like too that's kind of about it everybody else stinks Yeah, that's why you should probably fill out your running back group by, like, round 11. By around round 11, you should have, like, your fifth running back for sure. So you're not depending on guys like Malcolm Brown and Quadri Allison. Also, like, I think it's really important on a different note, if you're in Dynasty Leagues, like, a guy like Quadri Allison should not be floating around your waiver wire. I, I think it is... The risk reward that comes with like hype pieces that come out of camp when it comes to running back, the upside is just so high. If any of that comes, you know, we'll we'll hear hype pieces on every player, every running back, like everything this camp. But it's very, very much worth using waiver waiver money, fab money, a roster spot on these running backs because uh, if they hit, it is just so uh, it, it's it's fucking big time for your lineup. Okay, so anytime you hear buzz like a, what we what we heard from. Qu Quadra Allison, it's worth going and picking him up in Dynasty and just seeing what happens from there. So you never know what it could be. It could be the James Robinson of this year. It could be the Philip Lindsay. It could be, you know, any of those fucking things. So anytime you hear buzz about running backs at camp or something, go go grab that man in Dynasty. You know, the the risk is literally that you just spent like eight fab dollars and you have, you know, you use one of your 28 roster spots on your Dynasty team. But those guys should be picked up stat. Speaking of Dynasty, I think I'm getting on the fuck, Matt hasn't I'm getting on the Roto Underworld radio podcast this week, I believe. They just released an episode today. Um And he hasn't like sent me over. He usually sends me over a show sheet like a couple days in advance. Uh, so I don't know what's fucking happening, but stay tuned for that if you happen to listen to Roto Underworld Radio. I have so much shit going on this week. God damn it. August is insane. Oh, boy. Let's see. Devontae Booker. I kind of get the appeal, I guess, of Devontae Booker. But, like, they also just signed Alfred Morris. So, I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm pretty good on Booker there. But that should also have been kind of a telltale sign that Saquon Barkley is probably not going to be ready. So, that was just another dumbass move by me. Zach Ertz. Jamison Crowder. We are almost there. Let Taysom Hill fall to me, please. Just do me this one solid. Just do me one solid, baby. Too much Oss is going to take another quarterback here because he's only got one. Who does he have? He's got a Pittsburgh wide receiver, so Ben is still sitting there. He's got, uh, yeah, he's probably going to take Ben if I had to guess. Anthony Miller, interesting, interesting. I actually kind of really want, oh, no, I'm going to have to take so I could either, oh, you fucking motherfucker, Jay Harms. I hate everybody, bro. And he's going to take Ben, and then I'm going to be fucked. Should I just take Jameis and say fuck it? I don't even have any New Orleans wide receivers, so it's not even a stack thing for me. Damn. Damn. I played myself, huh? What are you doing taking three quarterbacks when you already have Kyler Murray? I hope your fucking account gets hacked. And then they draft Taysom Hill in the first round of every fucking draft. Uh, okay. Okay. This this didn't turn out well. This team stinks. All right. We're just going to fucking big brain send this shit. We're going to go Jared Goff, and then we're going to go with Keelan Cole. I ain't even taking a third quarterback. Fuck it. I probably should take Big Ben here if he drops to me. 
I didn't even take a Detroit wide receiver, which I would have taken if they didn't grab me Cole Beasley and take T.Y. Hilton. Oh, if this if this team doesn't finish in twelfth place, I don't. There, it's just there's there's no finishing in twelfth place for me. End of the day, that's what it comes down to. Boom. All right, well, that's the squad, unfortunately. I'm actually embarrassed. I usually don't get embarrassed with these drafts. What I usually say when I'm drafting these, again, because we go by exposure. You know, I'm doing a million of these drafts, so I choose and pick different players all the time. So I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm more like don't listen to or don't don't care about the players that I'm taking. Just listen to the analysis I'm giving on the players throughout the mock drafts, okay? So I hope you all enjoyed this one. I can't imagine you did, but I'm glad that you, you spent some time with me on this beautiful Monday morning. Very, very appreciative of that. I would be more appreciative if you downloaded the Underdog app, which you should do because it's the first link in the description. Very easy. Takes straight to the App Store no matter what phone you're on right now. Uh, and when you deposit $10 on there, you're going to get $25 free if you use the promo code BDGE when you sign up. $25 free and you will be entered into the giveaway to bring your ass to New York City for a fucking weekend. Let's go. All right. I'm not even going to finish this draft because I have so much shit to do, but... Here is the, uh, and fuck it, I'll link the draft board down below. I love you guys, Underdog Fantasy. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thumbs up if you didn't hate the video. I'm out.